regarding those folks that were held up by, Mr. Tuber, by Senator Tuberville and the fact that they didn't complain. Well, good for them, because when we wear the uniform, yours is not to question why, yours is just to do and die. And we don't talk about political things because it is against the regulation. So they weren't doing anything grandiose. They were doing their duty as they should. And Tuberville was doing his duty as he should. The policies in the military regarding the subject at hand are wrong. And thank God somebody was willing to fight for them. I just want to point out to what my colleague just said. As, you know, as it relates to members of the United States military whose promotions were being held up because of a senator who had problems from an ideological point of view with bodily autonomy, the message to them was, ours is not to reason why, but to do or die. But then to a gentleman here who did complain and fight, wrote, wrote a book about his issues, the message was completely different, which I just shows, I think shows the hypocrisy in this room right now from the other side of the aisle. I'm from the state of Florida. Um, this war on wokeism is not new to me. Um, and it's a shame that Republicans on this committee haven't caught on to my governor, DeSantis' failing presidential campaign that's based on this war on woke. And this misplacement on wokeism in the military endangers America's national security by ignoring the real threats. Some of the real threats to our national security are low military recruitment and retention rates, which is what I want to focus on today. Look, service members aren't leaving the military because of DEI training or because a military base was renamed or because someone accessed an abortion. But what I do hear from my constituents is this. I've had folks write about problems with housing allowance being too low in the military. People messaging me about saying medications are too expensive. Um, folks worrying that service members won't be able to get pay if Republicans in Congress shut down the government. These are the real things that resonate with American, the American people because these are the issues that this committee needs to be addressing. Uh, General, you testified that the Army became more diverse and welcoming to soldiers of color over your time in service. How has that inclusion helped retain talented service members? We have a greater, thank you, Congressman, we have a, a, a greater pool to draw from. We didn't used to be able to draw from people of color or women or if we had LGBTQ, they were kicked out, of which I know many that were kicked out. We have a broader thing. We need every person to be able to serve. And we can't do that if we are trying to kick people out or not allowing people to serve and not make it welcoming. We're a better army because of our diversity. I 100% agree, agree with you. I mean, we know uh, at West Point that black students had highlighted at, during their time the art memorializing the traitor Confederate general uh, Robert E. Lee that hung on the wall and the fact that the only black person hanging on the walls was someone who was a slave. And I think that things like that hurt our military readiness and national security when it makes our service members uncomfortable. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion strengthens our national military. It does not work against it. General, you've also testified about your own story of service. Uh, quote, I didn't choose the army uh, because of patriotism. I signed up for the money, end quote. And I don't bring that up as a disparaging thing because we know that this is something that is true for many of our service members. Um, and especially when I speak with folks who look like myself in my community um, that are looking at joining the military. You joined um, to help afford college, your college, and ended up staying for more than four decades. So thank you so much for your service. We know that many soldiers enlist for financial reasons, but then choose not to re-enlist because it's unaffordable for them. Um, have you observed any trends around how economic struggles can stunt a soldier's career? Uh, thank you, Congressman. Yes, I particularly think that's true because the, our soldiers now deploy or actually rotate so often to Eastern Europe, to South Korea, uh, and to the Middle East uh, without additional money for that. And so if you're doing two nine-month rotations to one of those two places, plus National Training Center or other things, it's incredible uh, dif difficult, particularly for the family at home, because they have no great child care options. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I would love to host a hearing about that instead um, to see how we can handle those struggles. 
Um, since at least the 1940s, Congress has given the, uh, the United States military money to create signing and reenlistment bonuses to incentivize service members to join and stay in the service. General, do you think the military should be collecting data on why and when bonuses are helpful so we can better understand the financial hardships of our service members? Yes, we have been doing bonuses at least since I've been in, and they work because just like I was a poor kid uh, coming from rural Georgia, I had no way of getting through college without it. Those financial incentives matter in an all-volunteer force. A second thing that this committee should be hosting hearings on to figure out how we can uh, better our national security and military readiness and preparedness. Look, um, and I know we, we have uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Lohmeyer and folks who have had uncomfortable or maybe negative uh, interpretations or experiences with DEI, and I'm ne I would never take away someone's experience from them. But what I do want to call out is there's a difference between seeing something that you see value in diversity, equity, and inclusion, or diversity in our military, and saying, we ought to fix these problems. I think there's some problems with it. I think we ought to fix them, versus saying, we should just completely get rid of it. I mean, in 1954, when we began to desegregate schools in this country, we knew it would be uncomfortable. We knew there would be problems, but we did it because it was the right thing to do. This hearing is entitled, The Risk of Progressive Ideologies in the U.S. Military. DEI is not a progressive ideology. It's just the right thing to do. If we want to talk about progressive ideology in the militaries, we can talk about affordable housing and food. We can talk about tuition assistance. We can talk about universal health care that the military provides, progressive ideologies in the military, but not DEI. Thank you so much, and I yield back.